That's a pretty familiar sound, isn't it? It isn't familiar only to you men. A lot of the people we're fighting have come to know that sound too. And they duck and run like hell when they hear it. It's your tank talking. Talking the only language the Axis understands. Here are some of the reasons he understands it so well. This was a Jap machine gun nest. Now it's a Jap graveyard because an American light tanker knew when to use canister. This was a German supply column. Tracers from 30 caliber machine guns used at the right time set the trucks on fire. We've seen some of the effects. Now let's get to the causes. A tank can advance and maneuver and shoot, but it can't think. Somebody has to decide when to stop and when to keep moving. Which is the best firing position? What kind of ammunition to fire? Those decisions are up to the tank commander, but the principles involved are things every one of you needs to know. If you're a medium tanker, here are the kinds of ammunition you've got. Your machine gun ammunition includes AP and tracer. For your 75 millimeter gun, first you have HE. Then you have APC, which is an HE projectile with an armor-piercing cap. It penetrates, then explodes. And also you have smoke. There's a slight difference in a light tank supply. For its 37 millimeter gun, a light tank carries canister, but no smoke shells. Each weapon and type of ammunition has its own special job. Machine gun fire is effective against enemy personnel. So is canister, but only at ranges up to 200 yards. AG is effective against personnel and unarmored and lightly armored material up to the limit of visibility. Your ability to observe and adjust your fire is what limits your range. Used at proper ranges, APC will knock out pillboxes as well as tanks and armored cars. The effective range of the 75 millimeter gun in a medium tank firing APC is about 2,000 yards. But remember, the 37 millimeter gun in a light tank firing APC is effective against tanks only up to 400 yards and against other armored vehicles only up to 1,200 yards. Smoke is to screen you from the enemy. You've got to understand the capabilities and limitations of your tank and its guns before you go into battle. Know how to get the most out of what you've got. To show you some of the situations you should know how to handle, we're going to take a tank through a theoretical combat course. Various situations will be illustrated, each of which presents a different problem as regards selection of targets, type of ammunition, use of machine gun or cannon or both together, maneuvering and taking cover. In each case, you will have to think quickly, figure all the factors and do the right thing. To make it realistic, you will be under simulated hostile fire. Let's figure that's your tank. It's loaded with live ammunition as though for actual combat. Button up tight and adjust your periscopes. They give you the red flag and you're off. All right, suppose now you're in hostile territory. The first thing you run into is an enemy machine gun nest directly ahead of you, about 200 yards away.
Notice that the finishing touch consists of running down the enemy position, smashing the gun for good. If you run into enemy machine guns strongly in place, and machine gun fire doesn't get the desired results, use HE. Let's take another look at that action on a sand table. An enemy machine gun in your line of fire opened up on you. You kept moving and returned the fire immediately with your own machine guns. It wasn't necessary to make for cover. A machine gun can't do you much harm while you're buttoned up. Using your machine gun can serve your big gun's ammunition. In a medium tank, you carry about 8,000 rounds for your machine gun and about 100 for your 75. In this next problem, another machine gun opens fire on you, this time from your left flank. At the same time, an anti-tank gun starts blazing away from the front. Now what are you going to do? You have two enemy guns firing at you at the same time. In a situation like this, forget the enemy machine gun and move to cover, firing at the primary target, the anti-tank gun, while moving. That's what your gyro stabilizer is for, to help you shoot accurately while on the move. In this case, there's another reason for ignoring the enemy machine gun. Being off to one side of your path of advance, it's a job for the tank on that side of you. Once you reach cover, maneuver to a firing position as near the primary target as possible, unless you've already knocked it out. Now fire from a stationary position, with HE set for delayed action against the anti-tank gun. Move after each couple of shots. Keep the enemy guessing, and you can lamb into him before he knows where you are. Keeping in mind the things you've just learned, watch this next situation carefully. Here are enemy personnel on your right. And up ahead is an enemy gun waiting for you. You fire at the enemy gun without stopping and disregard the infantry. After you've knocked the gun out, continue on your way. To get this entire situation onto the sand table, all distances have been shortened. You saved yourself a lot of trouble by quick thinking. You picked the primary target, the anti-tank gun. You kept moving toward it, which was right in this case because cover was too far off on your flank to be of any use and you fired while you moved. You ignored the secondary target, the infantry, and you fired the right ammunition, HE set for delayed action. In most situations, you can expect the terrain around an anti-tank gun to be mined. That's why you use HE to knock out the gun crew and demolish the gun from close range, and then skirt around the emplacement, giving it plenty of room. In this next situation, you have an enemy AT gun well concealed up ahead on the hillside. You have a choice of two firing positions, the woods on your left or the hill on your right. Well, look it over on the table. Suppose you chose the woods. Your field of fire would be limited and the enemy would have a pretty good crack at you, especially if the woods are too heavy to permit much moving around. Also, once the enemy had spotted your position from your muzzle blast, the woods wouldn't be much protection. Now let's see why the hill is a healthier place. The most important reason is that it gives you a good defilated position. It gives protection and you present a smaller target to the enemy. Here's how it looks when it's done right. You can see that the hill gives you a good field of fire and freedom to maneuver. Even though you're in a defilated position, utilize that freedom to maneuver to change your position after every couple of shots. This will keep you a jump ahead of your enemy's gun sight. Remember, the hill gives a tank cover, whereas woods offer only concealment. Here's a case where no matter how much you may need concealment, you haven't any. It's a bad spot to find yourself in, but sometime you might be caught in the open like this. Remember what we told you on the firing line? Smoke, that's the stuff. 
Remember the old saying, they can't hit what they can't see. Your smoke will keep them blinded until you maneuver out of danger. You're batting a thousand. Now watch that whole action again. Never forget that you carry one kind of concealment with you at all times. It's good tactics to smoke the enemy while you maneuver for a protected place from which you can get at him. Smoke is also particularly useful when you don't know exactly where your opponent is. A smoke screen gives you a chance to sneak around and reconnoiter. Keeping smoke in mind, what would you do if two enemy guns open fire on you, both of which are equally dangerous? Smoke one of them. With that one temporarily neutralized, you can concentrate on the other. Maneuver into a position to knock it out. Then, after taking care of that one, go to work on the one you smoked. There's no rule about which target to smoke, but if two or more strong guns seem to have you trapped, smoke is your best bet. It'll protect you from one of the guns while you engage the other. So far, you've only run into enemy guns and personnel. Here's something different, a fortified position, a pillbox. When attacking a fortified position like a pillbox, Move immediately to a depilated position. Stop before you fire. You'll be more accurate. Then, using APC M61 with base detonating fuse M66, fire at the loopholes. Even if the loopholes are closed or you miss them, the APC will penetrate and burst inside, killing off the enemy and making the pillbox useless. Look at the next problem on the sand table first. You run into a batch of infantry. What you do will depend on whether you're fighting from a medium tank or a light tank. If you're in a medium tank, knock them off with your machine guns. If you're in a light tank, You'd do exactly the same thing until you got within 200 yards. Then open up with canister from your 37 millimeter gun and use your machine guns to fill in the pauses while you're loading. This is the result of canister. Here's your next problem as it would look on the sand table. Suppose an enemy tank puts in an appearance. Don't give him a chance to get set. Open fire immediately while you dig for cover. APC is what the doctor ordered in this case. HE can be fired at tanks in a pinch, but APC will penetrate the armor and explode inside. Keep your opponent guessing. Change your position after every couple of shots. He can't hit you if he doesn't know where you are. This is what an enemy tank looked like after being hit with APC. Up to now, nothing serious has happened to you. But suppose you got into trouble. Suppose you got a track knocked off and were stuck in one spot. Stay with your tank and keep banging away with everything you've got. Stay alert and shoot at every flash of the enemy's guns. As long as your guns can fire, your tank is tough. Remember, use the right weapon and the right ammunition against the right target. Machine guns for enemy personnel. HE for unarmored vehicles and positions. APC for armored positions and vehicles. Smoke when you're in trouble. If you're a light tanker, canister for personnel at ranges up to 200 yards. When there's more than one target, 
choose the most dangerous. Take advantage of all available cover and concealment. Stop to fire whenever you can. If you must fire while moving, be sure to use your gyro. Maneuver to the best possible firing position. Use machine guns whenever they'll be effective to conserve your heavier ammunition. Change your position when the enemy locates you and starts to get your range. And keep on fighting and firing as long as you have the stuff. There goes your tank. Look at it. Strength, maneuverability, firepower, everything it takes to win battles except training and brains. These are the things you've got to supply to make the combination unbeatable. Brains and training. 